Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It's time for the Level 1 Podcast. It's time for my final podcast of the week and my final streaming day of the week as it is Wednesday. And as you know, typically, Wednesday, last day before my day off, which is usually Thursday. This week originally was going to change because of my anniversary, my wedding anniversary, that is, because it's today. But my wife's work schedule changed and shuffled everything around And so we decided we're going to go out tomorrow. And so because of that, here I am for my final consecutive streaming day of the week. So it is time to chill with Phil on the show. And we'll talk a little bit about how everything is going. Uh, Nothing too crazy major to discuss today. Uh, In reality, everything's going pretty swimmingly good. Although some things are going as I predicted. And we'll talk a little bit about that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It just means that a lot of these games that get viral popularity don't get viral popularity when I play them. This happens almost every single time. And I want to reiterate that for everyone, that you guys seem to think that I am the same as everybody else, and I'm not. I'm very different from most other content creators, especially when it comes to covering certain kinds of games. And we'll talk about that in a sec. All right. By the way, again, this is not me bitching or anything. This is just me knowing that, but literally hearing otherwise from people for two, three months and then basically having it be confirmed, right? So anyway, uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Today is April 10th, 2024. And today is an offline gameplay day. Yesterday was an all online gameplay day with Helldivers 2 and Street Fighter 6. Today is offline progress with Elden Ring and uh, more of Alone in the Dark, the second run now with Emily, the other character, to get some alternate choices and alternate gameplay stuff going on. Um, so, by the way, I just want to say, if you haven't noticed, I've been trying to adjust the camera differently. So, I adjusted the camera to have more of me on camera, but now, as you can see, the lighting is really bright down there. So, is that bothering anybody? It kind of bothers me. And I'm thinking maybe I should adjust the camera again and have it pan slightly back up. Right? Like, maybe if I do... Like that. Because that's legitimately bothering me. Having that burst of light coming out of the LED like that. It's distracting me. I'm looking at my own podcast and getting distracted. Well, we'll see. It's always constant changes and improvement around here. I keep tweaking stuff to try to get it better. Uh, you know, with this new pop guard that's different, it changed the frame, and then I started changing the, the camera around, and now I'm looking, I'm like, why can I, I could see the LED strip down there, it's bright, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so basically, today is all offline gameplay, as we're doing the second run through the game, which is going to be much faster than the first one was, um, we'll talk about that in a bit when we get to the schedule, um, and then after that's my day off, which I'm going to have a nice day out with my wife tomorrow. And when I come back on Friday, it's it's more of this balance between multiplayer, single player, multiplayer, single player. Although I'm excited <clears throat> because, uh, number one, my wife and I are going to watch the Fallout TV show that starts tonight. If you're not aware, Fallout, the TV series, is on Prime Video starting tonight at 6 p.m. And it's all eight episodes. So we're going to watch some of that together tonight. Uh, and then... We're going to probably watch the whole series over the course of, you know, the weekend-ish. And I'll probably review it for DSP Reacts. So that's something exciting. We love Fallout. Exciting to see it converted into a TV series. Hopefully it's good. In addition to that, on Saturday night, we're going to be doing co-op. For the first time in ages now. Almost two months, right? With Actually, it is two months now. With the uh, Beyond Two Souls playthrough that's coming up. So there's going to be some good stuff um, coming up that I'm excited for. And I hope that you guys will join me for it uh, over the course of this next week, along with all the other gameplay that's happening. Good balance of stuff, okay? Speaking of Fallout, I guess we should just talk about Fallout in general. Uh, FYI, yesterday, my Fallout playthrough uh, from 2008 began its run as an upscaled, remastered playthrough over on DSP Throwback. This is my channel where all my old playthroughs are either being re-uploaded so you can watch them again because they were deleted from the internet at some point, or they're being upgraded and remastered for a modern audience with better visuals, 
um, more clarity in the audio, upscaling, uh, better frame rate, like all these huge improvements, okay? So FYI, <clears throat> part one of Fallout 3, my 2008 run went live yesterday morning. So far, people love it. Overwhelmingly positive comments on it. People saying, wow, it's so cool to see this back, but now it looks so different because my original run was a 480p digital camera from the early 2000s pointed at a 720p widescreen TV from an angle to try to fit the frame into the camera frame. Um, it was blurry. It sounded and looked absolutely awful, but people loved the commentary and the gameplay. So the playthrough ended up being one of my most legendary ones over the years, and it actually was my first ever RPG playthrough nearly 16 years ago. So having this now become widescreen HD 60 frames fully restored to like an epic almost direct capture quality is pretty damn cool. And I hope that you guys are enjoying it. Like I said, part one, people seem to really like and are looking for more. FYI, there is more coming. Okay, there absolutely is more coming. Uh... So, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when it's on, you know, when it's coming. And uh, I think it, the next part may be tomorrow. No guarantees. Because these Fallout videos until... Basically, here's how it works. It, it's got to get into a rhythm, correct? We've got to get it down pat so that when these videos all get adjusted, it's the same kind of um, template to do it. Because once the template is centered in and working properly then you can literally just take every raw video and slap it in, slap it in, slap it in, convert, you're done. But right now, we're kind of in the early stages of trying to get this perfected. So it's tough. It's tough work. Um, and I'm hoping that it does get smoother over time. You know, this is going to be a 22-hour playthrough similar to the Red Dead Redemption playthrough. Uh, so it's going to take a lot of time, and I don't want this to end up being, you know, a huge project problem because it's so much work. But man, it's going to look and sound so freaking different. I actually cannot wait to re-experience this playthrough with all of you. Um, so it's going to be great. Check it out. Part one, already live. Uh, and then, you know, more parts coming hopefully later this week. In the meantime, Final Fantasy 13 is continuing over there if you're interested. Um, and that's going to alternate every other day, you know, hopefully with Fallout 3. But again, the Fallout 3 stuff may take a little longer dependent. We'll see what happens with that, okay? So it's kind of like Fallout Mania right now because you got the Fallout TV series that's going to be the talk of the town in the next week and my Fallout playthrough coming out at the same time. Pretty neat. Okay, um, so what I would like to do is recap yesterday because I have a few interesting things to say about yesterday's multiplayer, some of which is I'm not surprised whatsoever at Helldivers 2 and what's going on with it currently, um, nor am I surprised with Street Fighter 6, honestly. Uh, but I'm having a good time with each. So here's the deal. Eld Helldivers 2 came out in what, February? And when it came out, no one knew what the hell it was. And then all of a sudden, within a week, it was a giant internet meme. Everyone was talking about it. It became the virally popular game. And at that time, people were like, are you going to play it? And I was like, well, no. From my understanding, it's a team-based game where you need to have a team where you're coordinated and you're talking with your team to really do anything, you know, efficiently. And I don't play team-based games. I've tried them in the past, like Destiny and... Apex Legends, and they've worked. But as I've played them, people told me they didn't like that. The feedback was, when you stream, we like being interactive with you. So when you're streaming any game, we want to be able to talk with you. We want shout-outs. We want that level of personal interaction. That's the reason we watch you stream, because of the social aspect. Not always necessarily because of the game you're playing. So if you're teaming up with other people and you're interacting with them and you're talking with them in a party, you're not interacting with us. You're, you're basically kind of ignoring us, and that's not fun. And that's what happened. Like, Apex Legends, the first couple streams I did of it, people liked. And then after that, I got better at the game and was winning games with my party. And people were like, this is boring. Stop playing the game. So I did. Okay? Um, so, I really haven't done anything team-based in ages, and that's why I, I didn't initially play Helldivers 2. Well, as you know, I got inundated with RPGs for two and a half, three months. Finally, we finished them up, and we're looking for variety on the channel, and people are like, play Helldivers 2. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to try it. I'm going to see if what you guys are saying is true, that I could play it as a drop-in, drop-out game rather than having an established party. For the most part, the answer is yes. <clears throat> Although I could definitely see 
that the game would be much better with an established party of people you can trust and you can communicate with, it definitely still works when you drop in, drop out. It's just kind of half, I think it's like half potential. Definitely this is a game that if you have four people you're always playing with, or maybe a group of five or six and you're always rotating around, then you're going to get better. You're going to have that camaraderie. You're going to each have a certain role in the team, right? Depending on your loadouts and stuff. And I definitely think that this game works. But again, does it work for someone like me? And the answer is kind of. All right. I like the game. I've now played it six hours. And I'm unlocking new loadouts, new guns, new uh, stratagems. You know, learning more about the game. I mean, yesterday, shit. I played a solo match because they get, my teammate dropped and no one else was able to be summoned in for some odd reason. I played a solo match for like 25 minutes. I survived an incredibly long time by myself. I jumped off of a tower that I shouldn't have been able to drop onto. It was a glitch. And I, I survived the landing and it was hilarious. Like, everyone enjoyed that match, including me. But it's undeniable that this game is meant to be a team-based game and I don't do team gameplay. I don't, okay? Um... So it's funny because the first stream that I played last week as a night stream, impromptu, got insane amount of views, insane amount of support. Everyone's freaking out. I played it for an hour during my birthday stream and did okay. Yesterday, it was like just a normal day stream. Like the hype is already completely gone from this game. It was like the normal amount of attendance, the normal amount of regular support that I would just get for a daytime stream. Okay? And now I'm looking at the videos and the video views are terrible. Like, no exaggeration, it's been 24 hours, the videos have been live, well, close to that. Some of them don't even have, like, like 300 views. You know, it's just, it's just as if I was playing an RPG, basically, is the point I'm making here. Is, this game is meant for people who are virally popular streamers, who team up with other people on the internet, and have an established party, and have that communication, and people like to see that social interaction of those people. That's what this game is for. That's what it's made for. It's obvious that's what it's fucking designed for. This is what I was getting at two months ago when people sit here and demanded that I play this game and man, I'm really missing out. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I know what the game is. The game is great. I know that. I've seen people play it. It looks good. It's not for me because this is not the kind of game that fits my content. And people still yelled at me. You're playing shitty RPGs instead of Helldivers 2. It's your fault your views are down and this or that. All right? Here's the deal. I know what works and what doesn't on this channel. I knew Baldur's Gate 3 would tank this channel. I'm not stupid. I called it last year. I said a game that's 140 hours long will never work for this channel. And I was right. At first, the first one to two weeks, it worked great. And then after that, boo! And this channel's views and engagement tanked playing Baldur's Gate 3 for three, four months in a row until it was done. <clears throat> All right, same thing with these online multiplayer memer games. These were, uh, you know, Among Us, right? A game, again, you're playing with friends, you're playing it with a party online, you're interacting, talking, or whatever, it works. It would never work if I played Among Us. It would be the most boring fucking thing. You'd like to see me play it one session, and then that would be it. These games don't work for me because I'm not the same as the big memer streamer fucking people that everyone thinks is so popular a million view people you know i'm just that's not me it never has been me i'm a different niche of content creation okay so listen i'm not sad that i bought helldivers 2 or anything like that personally i'm enjoying the game but the point i'm making here is i've played one real major stream of the game and already the popularity has fallen off it hasn't even been a fucking week since i bought it and the popularity on this channel has already fallen off for the game and I'm not surprised because I told you so. But you don't listen. People just want what's popular rather than what works for me. And it's starting to piss me off because I know nine times out of ten what's going to work and what's not going to work for this channel. I know my audience. I know how retention works. I know all of this. Again, if I were a viral streamer doing viral content and people were clipping the funny... Like, for example, yesterday... That moment where I landed on the tower by accident, and now I'm glitched, and I have to get down, and I fell off the tower, and I bounced off the fat ass of the character, and I survived. If I were a viral streamer, that someone would have clipped that, and that would have got a million views overnight. Okay? That's how the game works. If you're already fucking popular, and then you do viral content with it, it doesn't work for a normal guy like me who's just playing it 
casually in a schedule with other games. It never will get that level of any kind of recognition or popularity. That's not the game it is. You understand? But I knew that back in February when it came out. I watched the clips. I watched the people playing it. I said, okay, I see what it is. No one's going to be enjoying this after a couple sessions. For me, anyway. And then what happens? It's exactly the same, right? It's exactly the same as I predicted. So what I got to tell you is you got to lay off a bit. Because, I'm, you know, this is now the second time in a row. First with Baldur's Gate 3. And now with this Helldivers 2 where I know what I'm talking about. I'm explaining to you why this stuff would not work for my content. People demand it for months anyway. Okay? And then I play it, and oh, look. After two sessions, it's already died out, right? Now, the thing is, I'm not upset with that. <clears throat> it did okay. It did it as well as a normal stream. So, it's not like, oh my god, this is going to tank the channel or anything around that. You know what I'm saying? Um, But, man... It's definitely not how people praise the game. This is going to be the game that's going to be amazing. It's going to blow up your channel. You got to join the, the viral movement. Viral movements don't work for me. I played Pal World. The moment it came out, I played Pal World. I played it for, you know, a multiple times launch week. I dropped what I was doing and stuck it into the schedule. Did it blow the channel up? No. Nobody cares. You know, <laughs> just being on everyone. What you should do feels every time that there's one of these new viral games, you should be playing them. They don't work for me. They never fucking will. There will never be a virally popular game that comes out of nowhere that I decide to play and will blow this channel up. It will never happen. There's too many factors of negativity and bad uh, understanding against me on the internet. People who won't give me a chance. People who will say, oh, you know, everyone else it's okay, but when Phil does it, it sucks, right? It doesn't work. So you gotta trust me over the nonsense of the viral shit on the internet. I'm 42 years old. How many other streamers out there are 42 playing Helldivers 2 and going viral? It's not going to happen. You got to relax. I mean, I, I feel I feel like people, especially in my audience, get so caught up <clears throat> in all of this nonsense. The hype, the viral popularity of a game that's a flash-in-the-pan success. Helldivers 2, for two months, has been the top of the charts on Steam. Correct? That's good. I hope that it has longevity. I seriously like the game. It's certainly not perfect. But again, this is a game for a certain style of gamer, a certain kind of audience, and a certain kind of content creator. It's not for me. This is just for me. This is just one game to casually play along with all my other games. And it'll fit in for a while, and then it's going to get dropped, likely, because it's not going to be that interesting. Right? Okay? So, you know, it is what it is. And you got to accept that and understand it I just think that people have been really, really demanding in the last six to eight months of me saying, oh, I'm doing everything wrong because I'm not jumping on the virally popular game. And then when I play it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so it's like, damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? No matter what. Like, well, I don't know what, what to tell you then, you know? It's just so hilarious that people don't listen. You know, it's again, it's because of me, right? It's because I'm an idiot and no one believes anything that I say. And everyone thinks that I'm just some kind of a moron who doesn't know anything about gaming or my own audience or anything, right? I'm just an idiot. So anything I say, just completely write it off as if, you know, as if it has nothing to do with anything, right? No, it's, it's just stupidity, right? It's just listen to me. I know what's going to happen if I play these certain kind of games. That's why I completely did not play Baldur's Gate 3 in September. Imagine if I played Baldur's Gate 3 in September... And I had this audience yelling and screaming for me to play it constantly. And I played none of the new games of the fall. Can you imagine that? And that's what would have happened. And then people gave me shit. Why'd you play it in December? It was too late. And it's like, you're an idiot. No, literally, you're an idiot. If you said that, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Same thing here. People are like, oh, you played Helldivers 2 too late. You're an idiot. You're a fucking idiot for saying that. You're just a complete moron making an excuse for the fact that now that I'm playing the game and it hasn't blown up on my channel... Oh, well, that's the excuse is because you played it two months too late. No, you're just a fucking moron who makes an excuse for every possible thing that I say to act like you know better. You don't know shit. You're a dunce, okay? I knew it wasn't going to work on this channel. I told you that up front, that it's not the kind of content I make, but people don't fucking listen. They just want what's popular. It's it. Every time one of these viral things happens, I call it out and I say, I'm telling you, it's just not going to work. And then people don't listen to me. And it's just like... <laughs> So anyway, 
I am going to keep playing Helldivers 2. I like the game. I'm getting better at it. I'm unlocking more things in it. And I'm enjoying my experience with it. I definitely feel like it's going to be a good time. Okay? However, I don't think it's going to blow up already. Like I said, I played it yesterday. And I've got videos that have like 200 views. So does anyone really care about this game? No. They care about the viral popularity of it. They don't care about the game itself or me playing it. They care about it being popular. And since it's not popular on this channel, they're not going to watch it. You understand? That's the point I've been making all along. The same thing with every other game that's virally popular. It's virally popular because a big creator is using it or playing it, and then it blows up on someone's channel. It never will happen here. All right? So it's just going to be another game for my rotation. All right? And I'm excited for that. And I want to keep it in there. I think it's a good refreshing kind of multiplayer. I do. Um, and so hopefully you guys will keep joining me for it. Okay? By the way, there's a ton of trolls in the chat today. Like a ridiculous amount. And I don't know why today particularly there's this many. But they even started before the podcast even turned on. So if you guys see me doing a lot of moderation, that's what it is. Like there's just a ton of them in there. They're fucking really going at it too. They're just morons. So... Uh, you know, if you see me, you know, that's what I'm doing here. It's distracting. <clears throat> see, I agree there. Green Mega Man says, it's a nice change of pace from the RPGs. I agree. I think this channel needed a change of pace. Too many RPGs were killing it and getting it super boring, right? I think watch me play Helldivers is refreshing. It's something different. And in a variety setting, it works. The, here's the other good thing about Helldivers. <clears throat> There's no beginning and end. There's no narrative, correct? There's no 140-hour story that must be told. If I decide to stop playing it tomorrow, it doesn't give everyone blue balls because I didn't get to the end, right? On the flip side of that, I can keep playing it as much as I want. I could put it on hiatus. I can bring it back. It's a multiplayer game. That's the good thing about Helldivers 2. There's no commitment there to get through and rush through and make progress. It's just a fun game to play whenever you feel like, right? Right? Cool. So... Yeah, I'm excited uh, for that continuing on, and I think it will work in a very limited capacity in the way that it works. Not, oh, virally popular blow-up game, because here we are, less than a week since I bought it, and already, not a big deal, right? <clears throat> okay, so, there you have it. Yesterday, I played Helldivers 2. It was a fun session with hilarious stuff. And didn't get much attention, but I'm still happy that at least it's in the rotation and giving us variety, and it did okay. All right? Last night, Street Fighter VI, very frustrating once again. Why? Because I'm using Dalsim, and Dalsim is likely the hardest character in the game to use execution-wise. If you miss one move, he literally dies. Like, he cannot come back from a deficit against a top-tier character who's rushing him in the face. He can't stop throw mix-ups because he has no reversal. Like, he's one of the weakest characters when it comes to certain things. But if you could get the pattern going to zone, he's super good. So it's kind of like a trade-off. Either you're completely dominating someone, or they're completely dominating you with almost no middle ground, right? But again, the game's shitty online play reared its ugly head. It frustrated the crap out of me because the netcode drops so many inputs. And again, if you get a dropped input with Dalsim, you're pretty dead. Like, I want to jump back, and I want to do air fireball. Oops, it gave me a diving headbutt instead which allows a Ken player to hit me once and it leads to a 50% punish combo. All because it didn't give me a half circle back plus punch uh, mo movement, it gave me down plus punch instead because the net code sucks and drops your inputs half the time. <laughs> so, it's super frustrating. I mean, it, it's funny too, because as much as I love Dalsim, have you noticed we rarely fight Dalsims ever in this game, right? Like I would say Lily and Dalsim are the two characters I almost never see in Street Fighter VI. Almost never. Because the, everyone knows that they're either the harder to play or lower to your characters. So no one bothers with them online. Everyone plays the easy mode rushdown shit online. So I had a good time last night. I put about two and a half hours. But number one, trolls keep trying to come into my matches. And then they like change their names around and shit. Uh, to make me think that it's not them again. So I actually started figuring out how to ban them. Which is good. Now, that won't apply to ranked, and it's fine because usually I don't face the trolls in ranked anyway. It's usually only in casual matches. Uh, but now I've kind of learned the way to get rid of them, so that's a good thing, obviously. Um, and then, um, some of these connections are terrible, too, because people can just get away again with online pattern spam, and you can't do anything about it in this game because the fucking netcode sucks. So, you know, my usual salt and rage. There was nothing any different last night 
from back when I was playing Street Fighter VI before. It was a typical rage session. Uh, but I got a lot of wins, which is great. I had a good time with the game, despite the fact that I get frustrated at how bad it is online. I'm still frustrated with it, but, you know, I think it still works. It's good variety for the channel. It's different stuff rather than just RPG Mania, which we had for three months. So, it went good. It was a good a good late-night stream of Street Fighter VI. And I'm ready now to use Honda. Honda's the final character who I used to play with that I haven't used yet. So probably that's what I'm doing Friday night, okay? So yesterday, it was a full day of multiplayer, all right? Variety-wise, it went well on the channel. It's just not blowing up like people thought Helldivers would. I knew it wouldn't. I told you guys it wouldn't. For two months, I told you it wouldn't. No one listens. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know that my what my audience is going to watch and what they care about. They don't. No one here is going to go crazy over a fucking multiplayer game like that, ever. It's never going to blow up on DSP Gaming. I'm not going to go virally popular for it. It's ludicrous stuff, okay? So anyway, today, we're now doing single-player stuff. We're getting back to Elden Ring, and now we're getting to the hardest stuff in the game, I would argue. Uh, it's really hard. I'm not really one-shotting enemies anymore. Now the enemies have gotten so tough and tanky that it's tough for me because I'm kind of spongy. And what I mean by that is I'm soft and, and, uh, and very fragile. Uh, I do a lot of damage, but my character build is not a tough guy. So, some of these enemies now are really starting to whoop me. They kill me with, like, two hits, you know? So, now I'm starting to try to build up, like, my, my health and everything. So, I don't die so fast. But it is it is frustrating that with this build, uh, you know, that I can't really uh, do... Because I, I actually feel... Here's what I feel. This magic, but was it Glenstone magic? Was very powerful for the first two-thirds of the game. I actually feel now, at the end of the game, it's going to be weak. I feel like now I'm going to have a harder time killing these enemies. Because uh, here's where it's good. It's good in the open world. Why? Because in the open world, you can get away from the enemies and get to advantageous positions and kind of snipe. You can't do that in boss fights in enclosed arenas, right? How do I get away from the boss in an enclosed arena to be able to use my magic? I can't. And the boss is going to kill me in two hits. So that's why I feel like I'm at a big disadvantage. Like, I'm about to fight the first form of Moog, right? I can't use... The Comet spell. I tried. He just moves right out of the way. He doesn't care. He gets hit by it and just tanks it and walks to the side. So I can't use it, right? So now I got to figure out how am I going to kill Moog when he has ultra powerful magic and I can't really use my best magic because it's going to leave me wide open. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this, right? And I don't know if it's got to be a hybrid uh, attempt or maybe maybe just the rock sling. You just keep tossing the rocks at him and see if it's, you know, it's physical damage. So maybe I could just keep pelting him with that. It'll stun him. we got to figure it out. So that's the first challenge today. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think that's going to be an easy fight. I think that's going to be a pretty tough fight for me because of the build. After that, we're going to head northeast into the frozen wastes of the Elden Ring map. This is the area with tougher enemies, bosses, dungeons, all kinds of stuff. And i got a lot of stuff I have to do there before I can get uh, to the unlocked Halley Tree or get into the end game of the game, which is what, Ferrum Azula? That's the floating area, right? So that's after that, because once you clear all that, you fight the the giant. I think that's what unlocks Faramazula. So, you know, we're getting there. We're getting through all these areas. Uh, we'll get some progress today. Likely not too much, but we'll see. Take, it really depends on how long it's going to take me to beat first Moog, right? So that's the first stream. Later tonight, it's my second run of Alone in the Dark, which is almost like a speed run. I'm using the character Emily for the other side run, and her story is different. But the gameplay is the same, meaning it's the same exact puzzles and combat and dungeons, but all her cutscenes are different, and her story apparently in the third act of the game, like when you get to the last third of the game, it gets super different from the first character, Carnby's. So, obviously I want to see that, and we're turboing through it, um, and basically what we're trying to do is just grab the items I didn't get in the Carnby run, or find new items. Like, we already found one item that was an Alone in the Dark comic book, that was not present in Carnby's run at all. And now that we have it, we completed one of the things that's going to unlock a new cutscene for us and when we get to the attic portion of the game. So I'm curious what that's going to be, obviously. Um, so that should be fun. I hope you'll join me tonight for that, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. It's definitely for a certain audience. Hey, you guys asked me to play Survival Horror at night. Now this will be at night for the next two to three streams till we beat it. So I hope you'll join me for that tonight. Okay? Uh, I'm not here tomorrow. I'm celebrating my anniversary with my wife. Uh, when I come back on Friday, it'll be multiplayer day again. So it's going to be Helldivers 2 during the day and Friday Night Fight Street Fighter 6. And I'll be using Honda for that. In fact, I may watch some Honda videos 
to try to see if there's any new tech with Honda since the last time I, I was paying attention, like two, three months ago. Maybe people have figured something out with Honda because honestly, Honda's not that good. He's decent in this game, but he's definitely lower tier. He can't really hang with everybody else. Curious to see how that goes. Uh, Saturday will be more uh, Elden Ring during the day. Saturday night is the premiere of the Beyond Two Souls co-op with my wife, Kat. We're going to be right here together doing co-op in Beyond Two Souls. First narrative-based playthrough we'll ever do together. Excited to be here for that because she's never played the game. It's going to be fun to see her reactions and choices for the first time she plays it. It should be a super good uh, stream on Saturday night. Sunday is React Day, so we got the clip show, DSP versus the Internet on DSP Reacts, followed by the retro React stream over on DSP Throwback of The Walking Dead Telltale Series Season 1, Episode 2. It is such a mouthful to say that game's name. It's ridiculous. Um, and then for the rest of the week, basically alternating between Helldivers and Elden Ring on the day streams and alternating between the Alone in the Dark second run and Street Fighter Six on the night streams. That's the plan for next week. Now, also next week, <clears throat> there's actually a new game releasing called Herald Halibut that seems to be incredibly unique. It looks like stop-motion animation or claymation, and it is a Game Pass game. So I'm willing to give it a shot and give it a look and just see what the heck it is since it seems so unique. I'm not saying it's something that would turn into a full playthrough because I don't even know how long the game would be or anything like that, but I'm curious to see what it is. So we might give that a look as well for variety. All right. So we got good stuff coming up in the next week and I hope you'll join me for it. Okay. All right. Now, before we get to anything else crazy, all right, some ideas for the upcoming marathon that we've been discussing. If you don't know, our next marathon event that we're going to do around here will probably be around late May. I'm thinking like that last week of May. And we've tossed around a few different ideas. The first idea I came up with was the fighting game fiesta, where basically I would play a variety of fighting games, including Street Fighter VI, but maybe some Tekken 8, uh, and then maybe some classic fighting games by hooking up and setting up <clears throat> Fightcade on my mini PC so we could play games like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike or the old Versus series of games and stuff like that. In addition, perhaps my wife could make some food recipes out of the Street Fighter cookbook that we have and uh, maybe I could do a little bit of reacting to old school fighting game footage of me on the internet from Evo and also perhaps <clears throat> I could do a little bit of kind of back in the day reminiscing about going to Street Fighter tournaments and talking about that time of my life and what it was like because it was very different from today. Um... And we could, I could field questions of people about those days, right? So that could be a fun event. That's one idea. Another idea we had was an Indies Marathon where people can nominate and vote on Indie-style games to be played and tried out in, like, our segments over the course of a day. <clears throat> I think that could work well as well. We haven't done an Indie-style event in years. So uh, the fun part about Indie Marathons is there's no commitment to having to play any of those games further. So if a game doesn't work, it's fine not a big deal most of these indie games are cheap so it's not like it's an expensive thing to do but in addition sometimes some of the games do work and i end up playing them in the rotation moving forward and then they end up being really fun um so i guess we'll see moving forward uh you know if that's something you're interested in now yesterday while i'm raging at street fighter 6 someone tips me and says how about a rageathon and i was like you know we used to do rageathons i think we've done two so what is a rageathon a Rageathon is people actually seek out frustrating games for me to play during a marathon, and I play them back to back. Previous installations of the Rageathon have been games such as Super Meat Boy, okay? A game where you know you're going to die 5,000 times, and through trial and error, you're trying to overcome or persevere. I remember Super Meat Boy got me pretty heated when I was playing it during that marathon, okay? Now, the problem with the, the Rageathon. <clears throat> is that people actually have to find games that'll work like that. And the second Rageathon didn't work because people were nominating stupid games like, at that time, if you remember, I hated Street Fighter V. I didn't want to play it. Well, people said, just play Street Fighter V. I'm like, I'm telling you this isn't going to work. Or right, I'll play it. I played it. Zero Rage. I just, I actually won more than I lost, even though I didn't play the game and didn't even really understand how to play it. I was still winning and beating everyone online. And people are like, I don't understand. I thought he was supposed to play and rage and lose. It's like, no, I'm good at Street Fighter. I, I still win anyway. I hate the game. I don't even understand its mechanics. And I was fucking kicking ass for most of that segment of the stream anyway. And people were like, uh? You know, because people are dumb. And they nominate dumb shit. Because they're stupid. And they think they're going to get me pissed off when they don't. So. <clears throat> we would really have to figure out what would work for a Rageathon. 
Okay, I'm not sure what would at this point. You know, this is many years later. I'm not sure what kind of rage-inducing games would come out or whatever. Um, I guess we'll see. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think for this next event, right? I'm very curious. What should be the next event? Uh, I think all three of the ideas work. The question is, which would work better? And then we need to start planning towards it, right? So let's start discussing these. And uh, and maybe eventually I'll I'll be you know doing polls or whatever, and we'll try to figure it out, and then we'll we'll go from there. We've got about a month to plan, and then we've got a couple weeks to hype, basically hype it up to get people excited for it, right? So okay, uh, really, there's only one news story that I wanted to cover today. Let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So this I mean not necessarily that this is news. Okay, I'll, I'll say it's news just for the sake of saying it's a news segment, but really it's not. So if y'all remember, in early 2023, there was a little bit of a remake game, and there was a lot of controversy around it. It was called the Dead Space Remake. Now, the reason this game had controversy around it is because the original makers of Dead Space, Visceral Games, had actually been laid off and fired by EA. So they went off and decided they were going to make their own studio and they were going to make their own survival horror game that was kind of like an homage or a spiritual to successor to Dead Space because there were no other Dead Space games. Dead Space had been defunct for like a decade and no one was making new ones. So they go off to do that. <clears throat> and as they're developing this game, which went, got uh, ended up being called Callisto Protocol, okay, at the same time, EA decides, oh, we're going to remake Dead Space. And it's like, what? Like, why are you doing that? The only reason you're doing that is to compete with the former studio that you fired because you feel stupid. You own the IP, right? But now they want to do their own thing because you fired them and now you want to bring ba back the games that they were making after you've already fired the dev team. Isn't that kind of messed up? And the answer is, yeah, it is. <clears throat> it's incredibly dumb Um, that that happened and it's kind of messed up and disrespectful to the game devs in my opinion okay so what ended up happening was Callisto Protocol came out I believe it was December 2022 and I'll be honest with everyone it's not a perfect game but it's a good game the plot is interesting and scary and fun the characters are well developed the gameplay elements are very different from Dead Space and that's what made people upset because when Callisto Protocol came out people went into it with the expectation that they wanted Dead Space 4. But Callisto Protocol is not Dead Space 4. It's a game where guns aren't very effective and you need to learn this new melee mechanic system to survive. It's very, very set apart from in Dead Space where it's all about guns, melee is shit, right? It's kind of the opposite. Um, And by the way, it's tough. It's a tough game. You need to master this system and if you don't, you get your ass handed to you over and over. <clears throat> now, Admittedly, the game has flaws. There's some graphical problems. It's a shorter game. There's one or two things that are more frustrating. Okay? So I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, the game's perfect. But overall, it's a fine survival horror game. Okay? But the critics panned the shit out of the game saying it was an awful game. Why? Because they're fucking terrible at the game. They didn't want to learn a new survival horror element or, or engine. They just wanted it to be Dead Space or Resident Evil or whatever. And since it didn't play like that, they all sat there and bitched and moaned. There were content creators who booted the game up and quit within two hours saying they couldn't figure it out or it was too hard. On stream, they quit the game. It's like, what are you, a pussy? It's a fucking game. You're supposed to learn how to play it. Isn't this what you're supposed to do when you're a gamer? I mean, really, it just makes me scratch my head like, what were the, what happened that all this negativity got thrown against the game? And me, I played it. Yeah, did I have frustrating parts? Yeah, I did. For sure I did. There was one or two parts I raged much later in the game, but I didn't give up and I persevered. And overall, I had a great time with the game. I don't get it. I don't get that the bad reception that the game got. It doesn't make sense. It's not equivalent with the experience that I had. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> the reason I bring this up is because the Dead Space remake came out a month later. In January, okay? And all the critics praised the shit out of it. They said, oh my god, it's such a great game. It brings back the Dead Space franchise. This is it. Dead Space is back, right? So I played it, okay? Now, to be fair, the Dead Space remake is fun. It's a very fun game. It's got good graphics. It's got sound gameplay elements. It's got a lot of good stuff. 
Problem is, most of the good stuff was already done. It's from Visceral Games. It's the stuff from the original game that makes this game feel so good. It does have improvements. For example, I got hair in my mouth. Ugh, got it. Um, for example, now the Ishimura ship is all connected. You can actually go throughout the ship and find hidden doors and areas that weren't present in the original game to get upgrades and some additional lore and stuff in the game. That's cool. There's areas that now implement mechanics from Dead Space 2. Like, there's a few anti-grav rooms where you can kind of jetpack around and do stuff. You couldn't do that in the original game. They've changed that and added that into this game. So, did they try to innovate? A little bit. Just not a lot. Most of the game is identical to the original Dead Space game with a facelift. Is a few elements that make it new, but for the most part, it's the same exact game, okay? So the critics praise it. Oh my god, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, best survival horror game ever. It's like, wait, what? It's fucking Dead Space 1. Did you not play Dead Space 1? And maybe that's what it is. Maybe the reviewers around today are fucking 20, 30-year-olds and never played the original Dead Space, perhaps? Because you would know it's the same game if you played the original. You would fucking know it's just they copied 99% of the stuff. So they praise the shit out of the game, all right? Guess what? If we're to believe this industry insider guy, Jeff Grubb, because he seems to always have inside info on the industry on his podcast, this morning on his podcast, he says, there will, no, there will be no further Dead Space remakes whatsoever. Zero. The, the franchise is re-dead. So it was dead after Dead Space 3 for a decade to compete and try to over or outshine Callisto Protocol. They remade Dead Space 1, and now it's dead again. They just, it's completely dead funk. They have no plans to do anything with it. You might say, wait a minute. <clears throat> Why? Why on earth would it be, would it be canceled? Like when we were playing the Dead Space remake and I finished it, everyone was like, would you play a Dead Space 2 remake? And I said, yeah, I would. This remake was fine. It's certainly not as good as the critics say, but it was a fine game. I had fun with it. I would play a Dead Space 2 remake or even a Dead Space 3 remake. I would, re I would play those. Okay. Well, they're not making them at all. Zero. And you might say, why? Why are they not doing it? Because the Dead Space 1 remake only sold about 1 million copies. Despite all the PR nonsense from every fucking game journalist shilling the fuck out of this game, saying it was the best game ever. And for some reason, them all yelling and screaming that Callisto Protocol sucked, so buy Dead Space Remake instead. The game only sold about 1 million copies which wasn't enough to make a significant profit for EA. So they deemed that the remake projects were not worthy and they scrapped them all and they're done with Dead Space, likely forever. Like at this point, I think they're never going to make another Dead Space. I think that's, it's it, it's done. Which is sad because the franchise is great and Visceral Games did an outstanding job with that franchise when it was in their hands. And now EA, it's their fault. They fucked it up. They're the ones who decided not to make any more. They're the ones who fired Visceral Games. They're the ones who then kind of made Callisto Protocol tank by making a remake to directly compete with that. And now they've, they've shut down Dead Space again. It's like, wow, EA is just fucking atrociously bad, aren't they? It really sucks because a publisher like EA used to be good for this kind of stuff. Like, they did variety shit. But I think, sadly, what it is is these game companies now have more become about this than anything else. So what's making EA its most money? Sports games and live service games with constant microtransactions. Ultimate team and dumb shit like that. That's what prints money for them. So now they just get, don't give a crap about this stuff anymore. I mean, what, what's the other example of a game last year that EA completely botched? Immortals of Avium, right? That, that was a game where the game had all the signs of being a good game but it was completely mishandled, mismanaged, mismarketed. No one knew the game was coming out. And they released at the same fucking time as Baldur's Gate 3 and acted like it was going to do well. Like, again, whose fault is this? <laughs> it's EA's fault. It's the management at EA that don't know what the hell they're doing. So they, put, they spend all this time and money on this new original IP. They completely botch its launch. And then they say, oh, you see, no one wants single player games. Keep pumping out live service ultimate team transaction games. No EA... Your managers are terrible and need to be fired. Just like the people in charge of Ubisoft are terrible and they need to be fired. And the people in charge of Activision Blizzard are terrible and they need to be fired. And Phil Spencer is a horrible leader for Xbox and he needs to be fired. All the people in charge right now of gaming are terrible. They're all making completely the wrong decisions. All of them. 
And then, and then, oh, well, the industry is in a downturn. You're the reason. You're the ones in charge of the industry. It's not us that determine the industry. It's you. You make the games. So if you're not making the good games that people will go out and spend money on, whose fault is that exactly? The consumers or yours? You're in charge. You're dropping the ball and you're blaming the consumers for it right? <laughs> like, it's our fault the Dead Space remake only sold a million copies. What? It, how is it our fault? It's our fault Immortals of Avian flopped. You didn't even market the game. No one even knew it existed, and you released it at Baldur's Gate 3's release week. Are you stupid? Yes, you are. You're the reason that gaming is so bad now. We don't want... Gamers don't want gaming to just be endless microtransactions. We don't. But that's what we're being shilled on now. That's what's being pushed down our throat because this is all that will make them money because they don't make good games anymore, right? It's just, it's sad. Somehow it's our fault because, I don't know, because well, we're demanding better games? We're not just happy with the crap you're pumping out? <laughs> it's like, I just don't understand it, you know? And the other thing that's funny, again, with this industry, people tend to fail up. And what I mean that is, oh, your company made absolutely awful decisions. Stay in charge anyway, right? Or leave that company and go to another company. The, the Don Matrick story, right? Don Matrick was in charge of the Xbox One launch. The Xbox One was infamously one of the worst console launches in history. He, his cocky attitude, his, his demeanor, the way he said things disrespectfully to the, to the consumer turned people off. So people did not buy the Xbox One at launch. He left Microsoft to become in charge of a mobile games company called Zynga. He failed up. And guess what happened at Zynga? They tanked under his leadership and he had to leave there too, but he got a big payout. This is what I mean. Like these people in charge of these companies, there's like no repercussions for anything they do. They, they make mistake after mistake. They don't listen to feedback. They don't listen to market research. They just do what they want and then they blame the consumer, but yet somehow they're still in power and they're still millionaires and they're still receiving kickbacks. How does that happen exactly, right? Typically, if you own a business and it's doing poorly, you don't get money, but somehow these companies are rolling in profits either from their past successes or from microtransactions from shitty games that they still fucking get away with it and they never have any repercussions for these choices. It's like, I just don't get it. <laughs> I, just, I don't understand it. And the industry will continue to be on this pace of errors, flops, unfinished releases, terrible games, until we get new people in power. These people who are in charge are either relics of the industry or just don't understand it, right? Like Eve Game O, his time has been, was done 15 years ago. He should have been ousted a million years ago, right? But thank God we got rid of uh, Bobby Kodak over at Activision. I mean, that guy was out of touch for the longest time. So thankfully he's gone, but now he's like, oh, well, guess what? Now there really is no one in charge. It's a fucking Phil Spencer. It's like, oh, God, you know, the, the ultimate bro salesman who doesn't fucking understand the industry. I just, I don't know, man. This, this whole EA shenanigan thing here with the, the Dead Space remake is like, so now you got all of our hopes up for a Dead Space franchise coming back. And because it didn't sell a billion copies... We're, that's it. Dead Space is dead forever now because of you. It's like you, because of you. Not because of the consumers, because of you. You know? Maybe if you actually did innovate the game, which they didn't. They did not innovate with the Dead Space remake. They added a few new things. Everything else is exactly the same as the first game. Maybe if you actually did really remake it rather than just kind of giving it a facelift, it sold more. But you didn't. You took the easy way out, and you expect that this is going to be like a zillion seller. Well, that's not how it works anymore in the industry. You know? Anyway, I, I, I rest my case. I can't make these companies be intelligent, nor can I make their leadership do their jobs well. All I can do is report on it. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, let's get to shout outs and see where the, the day takes us here. So we start off with BB Phil doing a super chat saying it was sad to see teabagging. In yesterday's Street Fighter session, does it happen often? Has the toxicity risen? I would guess that anyone who teabags is just a troll. I would think that because I don't, I, I have not noticed in general when I was open playing Street Fighter 6 last year against all comers in ranked matches, very rarely 
did I see anything like teabagging or something like that Every, once in a blue moon. So I don't think that it's a common thing in the FGC. I think what it is is that I'm doing these casual matches. The trolls are purposefully trying to stream snipe me and get in there and trying to play against me. And then they, if they get one round on me, they teabag because they think it's funny or something. You know, it's the biggest loser mentality you can have. I don't think it's a rampant thing in the in the uh, in the fighting game community. No. Uh, and BB filled in a second super chat saying, <clears throat> "Are you using D-pad or analog stick?" Uh, I he's you know I, as I showed many times. I use a joystick because I grew up playing in arcades, so I have to play fighting games on a stick. If I try to play them on a pad, I would likely play worse, actually. Uh, this is the Convo Obsidian 2 arcade joystick for PlayStation 4 and 5 and PC. And this is also the stick that I will use if I if I use do Fightcade uh, later this year. I'll, I'll get this working with my PC. So there you go. <clears throat> okay. Cool. So thank you, BB Phil, for the two uh, super chats. Let's get you on the leaderboard. <clears throat> okay. All right. Let's uh, scoot over here. So our first tip of the day. All right, well, someone just tipped $5 and says, I've been watching detractor content for a couple of weeks, but I want to come by and just kind of hang out with you today and give you a fair shake. Well, welcome. You know, I did my venting this morning on the podcast, but the gameplay is coming, and you'll see it's Elden Ring today, and we'll see how it goes. You know, I don't, like I said, with my build, I don't know how it's going to go because I feel like that build is really strong in certain cases and weak in others. Uh, I I'm genuinely interested to hear what your opinion is after the day of content, right? You know, this is the, the podcast definitely is a little different, has a certain vibe, but the gameplay is a little different. I, I use this podcast as a way, <clears throat> excuse me, to talk about topics, give updates, and get things off my chest before we get to the gameplay. Because I feel like if I if I just jumped right to gameplay, that it would be distracting. People would want to ask me questions and talk about certain topics. And it would basically, I wouldn't be able to focus on the game. So that's why we do this, uh, you know, every day before the sh the uh, gameplay stream begins. So, uh, welcome. Thank you for the five dollar tip. I appreciate that. Okay. Um. Cool. As of right now, I don't have any other contributions to shout out. So I'll just keep an eye on that. But in the meantime, if anyone has any topics they would like to discuss today, uh, please tag me uh, in the chat. I don't have time. We don't really have time to do suggestion box. It's too late at this point. Darth Hobbit says they like my button up. This is yet another one of the new shirts that I bought a few weeks ago when I was out with my wife for the summertime. Nice, a nice short sleeve button up. And uh, going out tomorrow, I might, I might look for a few more. I'm actually going to a different, like a thrift store style place tomorrow. This place takes in shirts that either were not sold or they were sold but never worn. They still have the tags on them and everything. Or sometimes they do have some clothes that were like lightly worn and they clean them up and resell them. Uh, so I'm going to be going there tomorrow and see what I can find. And maybe I'll find a few more shirts and stuff for the summer. Or maybe some shorts. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed. By the way, I'm happy that I, I got these early because it has have, we've had some warm days. Like today, it's cooler outside, but the sun is out. So this office is heating up. So it's nice to be able to wear the short sleeve shirt, shorts and, uh, and cool down and be cool in the office here. So good stuff. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, let's see. You want to discuss the Sweet Baby Ink thing? Here's the thing. I, I don't know much about it. From, from what I'm to understand, and this is just my very cursory knowledge of this, this topic, I guess there is some kind of a co consultation company called Sweet Baby Ink, and it's kind of like an ultra-progressive company. Like, you hire them to make sure that your game is in line with, like, progressive themes or something like that or not deemed offensive. I don't even really understand it, okay? But I guess somehow it got exposed that this was happening. And then they came, they basically researched and found like every game that has Sweet Baby Ink involved in it as, a, as part of this consultation has like really, how can I say, like liberal themes or leftist kind of stuff in it that a lot of people have issue with, all right? And so I guess what they said is expose it and now that it's been exposed, don't buy and support those games if you you don't believe in this ideology of you know existence. Honestly, um, it's a very political thing. It's a very very political topic from what I'm to understand. So, 
That's all I really know about it. I know there's various people on the internet on either sides of the equation arguing at each other. Kotaku got involved at one point because they're a very leftist games journalist site. In fact, most of the time they don't even really replace news at all or, or report news at all. They're just doing like hit pieces now and dumb shit. Uh... But that's it. I just, all I have is a very cursory knowledge of it. I can't confirm or deny any of these claims because I don't have any information about it. Like, I don't even know what games are involved. I don't know how they're involved. I, You know, you, you know me, my opinions on a game like The Last of Us 2, right? Where I feel like because they went so far to that in the one direction, the ultra-progressive direction, that the game's themes get completely changed from the first game and it ruins the game. Like, the game isn't fun to play because it's such a bad vibe because of the crap they're constantly pushing down your throat. And I think that's bad for gaming in general. But that's my take on Last of Us 2. I don't know what other games they're referencing, nor do I really care. Like like I said, I'm not a political guy. I'm not going to sit here and debate politics of games and shit. I'm of the opinion politics shouldn't be in video games, right? The whole point of playing a video game is that you're supposed to be sitting down and unplugging from reality entering the world of fantasy and having some entertainment. How do you find it entertaining if your whole life is already consumed with politics and then you sit down to play a game and it's all political? It's like, dude, I had enough. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here to play Elden Ring so I don't have to think about left and right-wing politics arguing with each other. If I booted up Elden Ring and it was all, like, like political content, I'd be like, what the fuck am I playing? Right? Like, what is going on? Like, why am I even doing this? And I wouldn't. I would close it. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I don't really get it. And that's why, you know, people have been talking about this topic for, like, like months and asking me to comment on it. I'm like, I don't really have much to say. Like, I don't, I'm not part of the debate. I don't want to be part of that debate. I would much rather just enjoy games and, and, and hang out with you guys than sit here politically being on one side or the other. And as you know, I'm not either. That's the thing. Like, I'm not left or right wing when it comes to my political thoughts i'm kind of in the middle so for me i kind of i could see both sides of different arguments but i don't want to sit here being political all day with video games i'd much rather say no thanks let's not go there i've had enough i see enough of it on social media i hear enough of it in real life i don't need to then uh have this be part of my gaming talk as well you know what i'm saying <clears throat> okay All right, what else would you guys like to talk about? <laughs> I think we've already we already covered that one now, right? Oh my god, excuse me. So now I see I knew it. Now everyone, every line in the chat is about this. I'm like, I don't want to talk about this. I really don't. I don't, don't care about this political bullshit. Let's talk about something else. Did I watch other Star Trek TV series other than Next Generation? Yes. I also watched Deep Space Nine um, when it was on TV. And then I watched Voyager later on, on demand. I think all three of them are great shows, but Next Generation is always going to be my favorite. Do I think spiders are too scary to be in video games? No. It's the realm of fantasy. It's not real. Ansu Kamaro says, I'm 80 plus hours into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and in the final stretch. Although the game is amazing, I'm glad it's about to end. I don't think you'll ever get back to it. It's just so long, but fun. Felix Demain says, Final Fantasy VII is about eco-terrorists trying to save the world. It's impossible to escape politics in games. Final Fantasy VI is the returners fighting against the evil empire who are treating everyone unfairly. It's basically revolt against the government, right? The difference is obvious fantasy plot and setting versus something where they're actually trying to represent real-life politics in the game. Do you understand the difference? Like, I understand the whole eco-terrorist thing in Final Fantasy VII, but it doesn't feel like you're working for Greenpeace. It doesn't feel like you're the fucking Captain Planet team, right? It's not like they're trying to actually shove those things down. There's no real Mako in real life, correct? So it's like, it's a fantasy idea about it. As opposed to 
Imagine if literally you're playing Final Fantasy VII and the entire game is about deforestation, drilling for oil, and the greenhouse effect. Would you be tired then? You probably would. You'd probably say the game sucks, right? Well, that's literally what they're doing with these other games. They're putting real life political agenda shit in the games and that's what's turning people off, you see? Because it's the real life stuff shoved in your throat rather than a fictional setting to something that might have a tie to something real. <clears throat> What announcement were revealed do I want to see during Summer Game Fest? For me, it's Bio... Ugh, cut off. For me, it's Bioshock 4 and... Kingdom Hearts 4. Uh, Man, what do I... What announcements do I want during Summer Game Fest? Shit. Ugh. You asked me these questions, but it's like... The only way I could answer that question would be to sit here and think about it for a while and mull over games that really we've been waiting for information on for a while and we didn't get any. Like, for example, Elder fucking Scrolls. It's about goddamn time we get at least a piece of information about the next Elder fucking Scrolls. It ain't gonna happen, you know, but that's what I want. Mass Effect. I want information about the next Mass Effect right fucking now. I'm tired of waiting. I want it now. But we're not gonna get it. <laughs> you see? Here you go. Elder Scrolls and Mass Effect, and we're not going to get that information, so there's no point in me even getting my hopes up, right? All right, something more realistic. Dragon Age Dreadwolf. I want information on Dragon Age Dreadwolf. There you go. Okay. I received a $7.06 tip. It says, uh... I've been watching you since Heavy Rain. Your videos and streams put me through the trials of life. Pull me through the trials of life. Crazy to think how much time has passed since then. Happy you're still going at it. Thank you. An anonymous $7.06 tipper. Yeah, I'm still here. Still going strong. I'm not going anywhere. And, uh, you know, doing. I I've been around for so long that I have an entire channel based around nostalgia of my old content. How crazy is that? Right? Pretty darn crazy when you think about it. Cool. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Beyond Good and Evil 2, I'll be honest, I don't think they're still making it. I think that game was, was internally either completely put on hold or canceled. I really don't believe that it's being made at this point at all. Um, but for some reason, Ubisoft hasn't officially canceled it. But when you when you go so many years without any information on a game, it's it, it's not being made anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like even with Skull and Bones, even though we it took so long to come out, event we were getting information. We were getting snippets of information to update saying yes, it's still coming. Here's another piece of information. It's a piece of shit, but at least it, it, you know we had info. We have no info on on, on Beyond Good and Evil Two at all since that trailer. What five six years ago, something like that. That game's not being made. There's absolutely no fucking way. I received a $20 tip. For one minute, man. He says, Did you know certain games won't be the right choice as a variety streamer, but you eventually played due to viewer demand? Which games would you have preferred to play instead? It's a good question. Um, Because actually, that's what we were kind of facing, is if, if we're having RPG overload, right? And people, even if the good games are RPG, like, I think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a fine game. I would like to be playing it right now. But it's not working. I was playing it, I was getting 200 viewers and no contributions, and people were complaining it was boring. So that's why we stopped playing it, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, the question is, what, would I, what should I have played? I don't know, I think Alone in the Dark was a great choice, because I needed variety, and I needed something fresh, and survival horror always is good content for me. Perhaps I would I would say if it weren't for me trying out Hell Divers 2, which people have been yelling for for months, perhaps I would have explored some stuff on the mini PC, looked for some more indie style games or horror games in that respect, and not to say that they would have been long games, but at least it would have brought some variety, big variety to the streams. You know, see what's actually going on in the realm of that I usually don't touch upon. Um also, people have been a lot of people have been all about emulation. They're like, dude, you're you're really missing out 
on like a gold mine with emulation on your mini PC. And I'm like, I, you may be right. Like maybe there's a lot of games out there I've never played because I couldn't play them because they're not available on a console. And maybe emulation is the way to go, but I don't know anything about it. You know, that's something that I would need guidance. I would have to need someone to actually help me to understand it. Um, so maybe that, maybe that route, maybe I would have actually jumped and delved further into the mini PC to look for games on Steam, horror games in particular, but maybe other stuff, indie games. Maybe I would have, you know, tried some mini PC emulation stuff. Maybe I would have got Fight Cage set up already, right? Uh, there's a lot of different things in that regard. Or, I mean, on the other flip side of that, could have jumped into like something like Game Pass because I, I haven't even been in the Game Pass menu in, in how many months? Even look to see what's there. I just could have found some golden, some gems on Game Pass that would have been quick playthroughs that would have been fun or interesting or original or different that aren't RPGs, right? Something like that. It's, that's, that's, that's what I think. But again, that's just me talking out of my butt. I, you know, we didn't get to that point yet to really do much research. Uh, excuse me, Anto Kamaru says, yeah, emulation is not what it used to be. It's extremely easy now in the current year. You can set it up in like three minutes. So there you go. Um, I received a $2 tip. What about a game like Spec Ops The Line? It's modern day politics at the time, 90% of the plot, which led to a great twist in the story. I think it worked because no one knew that's what it was, right? Like when you played Spec Ops The Line, you thought it was just going to be like a military shooter game. And the people who played it, they were like, what the hell? This is seriously heavy, horror-handed writing. And it was, like, shocking at the time that's what the game was. I didn't know what that was. it was that either. Getting into it, I had no clue that's what the game was going to be. I was sh super shocked. Like everybody else, we got to these parts where people are melting with white phosphorus right in front of you. And you're like, oh, my God, this is disturbingly disgusting and fucked up. So uh, I think if it's done in a way... Or for the game to be different, or, or like a shock value like that, I think it works. I think when it's heavy-handed, pushing modern-day themes down your throat that don't seem to belong in the game, that's when it doesn't work, right? <clears throat> no, I never played a House of the Dead game on stream. I mean, how, how really would I? It's a light gun game, and there's no way to even use a light gun with modern TVs anymore, right? I know that they've had ports where you're just moving the target around with a thumb, but that's really not the same thing, right? <clears throat> they had this interesting premise for light gun game, uh, like emulation at one point, where, so your target is the like the little reticle that moves around on the screen, right? But to make it simulate like you're using a real gun, it would speed up the movement if you held a certain button. So when you're aiming, you're either aiming real slow, or if you see something fast, you might react and try to swing your arm over there fast, right? So what they would do is you would move at standard speed, but then if you held the button, oh, you could move faster across the screen. Of course, it's harder to get accurate aim when you're flying across the screen like that. I forget what game it was that I played like that, and I actually thought it worked really well because it felt like you were actually using a gun to play the game despite the fact using a target, a target or a cursor. But man, I can't remember what game it was. Was it Resident Evil? No, because Resident, Resident Evil... Chronicles actually was on the Wii and it was motion control guns. So now I can't remember what it was. Hmm. <clears throat> Lord Thomas says what made Spec Ops the line shocking. It was the seventh or eighth Spec Ops style game. They were all just generic military games, but no one expected that one to have a narrative at that level. Right. <laughs> Would I be interested in playing Duke Nukem Forever again? Probably not. When Duke Nukem Forever came out in 2011, already. <clears throat> the game was like 12, 13 years late and felt like a game from the 90s. Now, I was okay with that because I had played the original Duke Nukem and I got the joke. You know, the joke is, oh my God, it's 2011 and I'm playing a game that feels like it's 1997 again, right? And it worked. Like, it was a playable game. It had very fun segments. Sure, it had insanely immature humor and stuff because that's always what was in Duke Nukem, but I felt like it worked as a game for what it was trying to do. Most people hated it. Most people said it was terrible. It was awful. It was a, a joke and not an entertaining game. Since I have played the original Duke Nukem, I got the joke and I really liked it. You know, I kind of compare that to <clears throat> Double Dragon Neon, which was a game that played almost exactly like old Double Dragon with a few modernizations, but for the most part played like old Double Dragon. And the critics at the time panned it and said, oh, it's, it's too outdated. It's like, but that was the point. 
That's what they're going for. They're trying to make basically another Double Dragon. So why are you saying it sucks just because it plays like the old game? That was the idea. So it was the same thing. Like, Duke Nukem Forever played like classic Duke Nukem just with a few modernizations like the graphics, and then people complain. It's like, what did you think it was going to be? It, it says right on there, Duke Nukem, you know, it, it's not going to be anything else. But anyway, no, I don't think a modern playthrough would work. Um, the game already was outdated. Probably playing it today, people would be even more, you know, 13 years later, be like, oh my God, it's so fucking bad, right? So... I don't think so. I don't think I'll be going back to play that one again. Mr. AG107 did a super chat saying, how long do you think GTA 6 will be delayed? So you, it's funny. So it's, we know it's supposed to come out next year, correct? <clears throat> that's that's what they're saying now. You know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. Because here's the thing. For as much as they're making Grand Theft Auto 6 to be a narrative-based game, because every GTA starts as a narrative-based game, you also know that they're implementing online. Because GTA Online is the most profitable thing that Rockstar's ever done, right? So, with GTA 5, if you remember, Online wasn't done yet, but they wanted to get the game out there, so they sold it first. And everyone played through the story, and then, like a week or two later, then they released GTA Online, which didn't work. It took about a week for it to actually start working. But then when it started working, it blew up, Right? Do you think they will do the same thing with GTA 6? Or, being that they know that the online component is likely going to be their next cash cow for at least another decade, do you think they will wait and delay the actual release of the game until online is ready and then release them simultaneously? The story as well as the online. I don't know. <clears throat> I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I think like it would work if they did it like GTA 5 where just release the story once it's done let people have a month or two to play through the story and enjoy it because then when online comes out it's going to become the dominant thing and no one's going to be talking about the story again right i don't know the other question is are people now going to expect the story to just be an afterthought because with gta 5 we were still of the mentality that you know rockstar was all in on their characters and and their plots and there was going to be dlcs in fact i just found this out recently <clears throat> as you know gta 5 has tons of easter eggs right and one of the Easter eggs was this mystery of Mount Chiliad, where if you do all this hidden content in the game, you can actually find like a cave painting. And it's bizarre because it definitely is referencing something about the game, but you don't know what. So people over the years, the last decade, figured it out and they said, this cave painting hidden in the game, the mystery of Mount Chiliad, actually was an Easter egg viral promotion for the, G the GTA 5 DLCs. Each one references the plot of Michael and Franklin and Trevor's DLC stories. Like, it's a, a teaser preview of what they were going to be. And it's like, so they they literally put all this into the game knowing that they were going to do the content, and then when, when online blew up, they just dropped it all. They literally never made the DLCs. They don't exist anymore. So, you've got references in the base game for something that never existed. Um, but that's what I mean. When GTA 5 came out, 100%, everyone expected Rockstar would be focused on their characters and the narrative and DLCs, and it never came to fruition. With GTA 6, is Rockstar saying, we're not expecting to do anything further with our characters. We're just going to do one story, and then it's online for the next decade, right? And if that's the case, will the story even be as good? I'm curious. Will they put more effort into online than the story? Is that why the game's taking so long? Because they want to redo online as a whole new universe, you know, different things? I don't know. But I'll tell you this, it's disturbing. I am nervous about it. I like Rockstar games... As narrative games. I, I didn't like GTA Online. I played it a few times. I never got it. I never understood it. Why it would catch on or be popular. And then it was virally popular and everyone played it. You know. Made them billions of dollars. With microtransactions for crap. And it's just. I don't know. I guess. You know. I'm not in line. I'm not. My brain is not in line with modern gamers anymore. That are the memers. The people who are all over the viral sensation games. Again. Helldivers 2. And the fucking Among Us. And. The PAL world, whatever game's hot, you gotta play it. You gotta play the next online experience. That's just a social thing that doesn't mean anything. None of that to me is gaming, really. Like to me, that's like I'm fucking around. That's not serious gaming. Those aren't the games that would stand out to me or resonate. But those are the ones that become culturally synonymous now in pop culture. It's weird how things have changed, right? <clears throat> it is. So anyway, uh, yeah. Who knows? 
Will GTA 6 actually come out next year as planned? Or will they keep delaying it because they want online to be ready? I don't know. I guess we'll see. I really don't have a good answer for that, right? Uh, no, I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in the finals. Zero. Okay, guys, anything else? Any other questions, comments, concerns, or topics to talk about before we prepare to adjourn and get ready to resume my Elden Ring second run? Can I remember the story of a game I played 10 years ago because I seem to have a good memory? Uh, it depends on... Honestly, it depends on uh, the game. If the game has a big, uh, epic, rememberable story, then yes. If it's just a random game that I played 10 years ago that never went anywhere, then probably not, you know? Wow, Darth Hobbit says, Alien Isolation will be 10 years old this year. Let that sink in. Yeah, 2014, right? Hey, I'm about to hit my 10-year anniversary as a Washingtonian. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah, I mean, by now, I have made far more content by myself in Washington than any of the content that I made back when I lived in Connecticut. You know, Connecticut years were 2008 to mid-2014, so roughly about five to six years. I've been here 10 years now. 10 years of content here in this state. <clears throat> it's pretty crazy to think about because a lot of people like to reminisce about the old days of content or whatever. And nah, I made far more stuff here in this room than anywhere else. You know? Pretty nuts. But man, how things have changed, right? The kind of content I make, the style that I make it, at all my equipment, visuals, who I am as a person... Right? I mean, it's completely different from 10 years ago. You watch any random video from 10 years ago compared to today, and it's like, what the hell? That's the same dude? <laughs> right? The only thing that sounds the same is the voice. You know, the whole commentary style, the gameplay style, the streaming style, me and my, my life, all completely different from 10 years ago. <clears throat> you still remember the day I moved? Let me, let me just tell you. <laughs> When I moved out here, okay, when I moved out here, this is when reality smacked me in the face. Because back when I lived in Connecticut, it was like, basically like everything kind of went right for me in Connecticut. Not to say that everything was perfect, but like there were things that mostly things went, went in my way. It's like, as soon as I moved out here, this is reality. It was like, oh, oh my God. You know, everything started to fall apart. Whether it was, you know, I could immediately the week I moved out here, I couldn't even make good content because my equipment wasn't working right. And, you know, immediately when I moved out here, my income dropped and it was like a huge problem because I was like, dude, I spent all this money moving out here and now all of a sudden I have a big income dip and it hurt bad, you know? And then within a year, all my personal life started to unravel. You know, I got swatted and all this crazy shit going on with my relationships and everything. And it was just, everything started falling apart. And that's really when I, I like I said, in life, when you, the, the time in life that you will mature the most is when you're faced with the strongest adversity you've ever faced and getting through it and handling it, right? That's, that's really shows like the metal of a person. And that's when the true person will either, you're either going to mature and, and learn from, from, mistakes and hardships and grow, get through them and be, come out that end a better person or you're going to crumble and fall and fall apart. It's one or the other, right? And for me, I really feel like this last decade, right, has, has been a test, but I've come out of that decade a much better person, a much better content creator. Everything around here is just much better. And it didn't, it might not have turned out that way, right? It could have been the opposite. It could have been I turned into a big fucking mess, a drama queen piece of shit, just being like all the other drama queen piece of shits on the internet 
who just constantly have to be immersed in this drama culture in order to make a living. And <clears throat> it very well could have gone that way for me. And it didn't. And I'm happy it didn't. I feel like for as many missteps as I made those first few years that I lived here, then I, I, I had that epiphany and a turnaround. And, you know, these last many years have been much better for me. Um, thankfully, right? But yeah, you know, coming up on my 10 year anniversary living here, it's like, dude, this, this is where my real adult life began. The moment I moved here into this home and things changed for me in my life, this is where my life really began. Before everything else was just kind of like the precursor to my real life here. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I, I feel. I feel like it's the last 10 years of the first 10 real adult years of my life, which is weird because I should have been an adult when I was 18, but I don't feel like the adult life started till I moved in here. And then it was just like hardship, 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 difficulty, difficulty, setback, setback, problem, problem. And I just had to constantly keep dealing with those over and over. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Do I miss living in my old place? Absolutely not. I hated that place. Seriously. The the one advantage was I was I was living by myself and it was a pad where I could do whatever I wanted because I was you know only by myself so I could gain whatever I wanted, drink whatever I wanted, eat whatever I wanted, do whatever I wanted at any time, right? That was the advantage, but that place sucked. It was tiny, it was cramped, the the temperatures were awful. It was either way too hot or way too cold all the time. You know, everything in that place was just bleh. too expensive. Nothing there was worth it. Like, like I told you guys, just think of it this way. You know the house I live in now. It's a relatively large house, okay? It's, you know, you know, good square footage, many rooms. It's a nice house. The place in Connecticut was literally three rooms. It was bedroom, bathroom, and, you know, living room, kitchen, all together. So it was three three-room, small apartment-style condo versus my nice big house now. The dues... The condo dues on the Connecticut condo were the same as the dues here when I moved here. Now, the dues have gone up over the last 10 years, but the point I'm making is that's how overpriced shit is in Connecticut. I was paying the same amount of money for the dues in a tiny little rinky-dink fucking cramped condo as I was paying for a giant house out here. It didn't make any fucking sense. The place sucked. It was just way overpriced. Way, way, way overpriced living there. All because, oh, because I live near New York City. Fuck that. Who fucking cares about New York City? Get out of your mind. <laughs> Darth Hobbit says, I, I, I moved nine years ago. I'm in my 30s, but I feel like my life began then. I'm married and a parent now. I felt like I was just existing before I moved. But, I mean, right. It's exactly what I feel like. Again, that whole time in my 20s, I was so heavily in the Street Fighter, right? And then, my late 20s and the early 30s, it was the early YouTube days. But it wasn't until I moved right here 10 years ago that this the day I moved in was the day my adult life began. In reality, it smacked me in the face. The honeymoon of life was over, right? All those misconceptions I had about how everything was going to be great or whatever. You know, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a popular YouTuber forever. I'm going to make tons of money forever. I'm never going to have any financial problems, right? Remember, I used to have a fortune. I went to a Chinese restaurant with my parents the first year when I was a YouTuber and I opened a fortune cookie and in the fortune cookie it said you will not have to worry about money ever again that's what the fortune said and I was like this is a sign that for the rest of my life I'll be having rolling in YouTube money this is amazing and yeah right right like that lasted a few years and I moved out here and boo went right down the shitter with <laughs> with all of that so that's what I mean like I was very I was very stupid and naive and immature and I moved out here and all this stuff started to go wrong and I realized then that life is going to be challenged. But then I learned how to handle those challenges, right? I became a better person. I stopped delving into drama. I, I stopped bothering with, you know, all kinds of shit that was getting me into trouble. And changed for the better. You know, one of the things that had to change was my, my relationships. You know, had to change. My life situation was a toxic one at that point. I had to get out of it. And I did. And now I'm all the better for it. I'm, I'm much happier. I'm happily married great home life, great job, right? Seriously. <clears throat> if anything, what you could say is at least I've made many mistakes, but if you look at me today versus old Phil, you can say that I've definitely changed and I'm not doing the same stuff and I'm not making the same mistakes, you know, that I used to. 
The stuff that you can get me for now is like, okay, I rage too much when I play fighting games. Big deal. I agree with you. That's like my guilty pleasure thing. I play a fighting game and I lose my temper and I start swearing at people and acting like, a, like an immature asshole. It's like the old days of Phil. The old FGC Phil comes out when I play Street Fighter Six online, right? But the thing is, for the most part, I'm so different from how I used to be. That's the rarity, right? You know, I now, my streams feel different. My content's different. Everything's, I'm, I'm an older dude. I'm, I'm a more mature guy. I look completely different, right? Like, look at me now versus back then. <laughs> I'm much more healthy. I'm much more clear-minded than I was back then, you know? So, there you have it. I'm much, I'm much better positioned today, that's for sure. Okay. All right, everybody. I think this is a good place to wrap it up. That was a good, nice, positive way to end it, I feel. All right? I hope you'll stick around for Elden Ring as I take on the t tougher challenges of the game now with the magic build. You know, I feel, I feel like the whole first two-thirds of the game was more of a cakewalk, and now we're getting to the real tough stuff at the end that's going to challenge me with this build because I don't have any health. I'm just getting smashed, right? Uh, so I hope you'll stick around. And if you like survival horror and you want to see the alternate creepy plot line, I hope you'll come by tonight for Alone in the Dark. If not, well, I wish you the best. I hope you have a safe day today and tomorrow when I'm off. I'll be back Friday with more multiplayer madness. All right? But in the meantime, thank you all. I appreciate you all. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, I will see you all soon on our next episode, the Level 1 Podcast.